Today I'll show you 10 Tailwind tricks that I really wish I knew earlier. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced Tailwind user, there should be something on the list that will improve your development experience. So let's get straight into it. You probably already know that we can change the style of an element based on its state. But what if we want to change the style based on a state of another element? This is where the peer and the group utility classes come in handy. Let's say we have some elements inside this box. Let me just center them. Alright, so we want to change the style of the children when the parent is hovered. For that, let's turn the parent into a group and use the group hover utility to change the styles in the child elements. Let's make one red and one blue. And there we have it. Here is the use case shown in the Tailwind website. When you hover the parent element, the children's styles changes. And if we want to do a similar thing with a sibling element, then we just do the same thing with the peer utility class instead. And you can also choose a name for them in case you want to use multiple groups and peers but want to treat them separately. Ok, this is a quick one. But in case you didn't know, Tailwind has some very useful and easy to use animation utility classes. From our last example, if we just add the transition color class and set a duration of 300 milliseconds, the color change on hover will slowly take effect over the 300 milliseconds. And we can also even pass an animation curve and a delay for the animation. And we can do the same thing for basically any other animatable property in CSS. And there are also some preset animations that we can use out of the box that can be very useful. This one is very useful to understand if you're building responsive designs. Let's say we have a grid layout with three columns. We want it to change to a two-column layout when the screen becomes small. So let's use the small breakpoint to change it to a two-column layout on a small screen. Well, that actually didn't work. It's turned into a three-column on a small screen. We want the opposite of that. That's because Tailwind is a mobile-first framework, which means that unprefixed utilities take effect on all screen sizes while the prefix utilities override the styles at the specific breakpoint and above. So to fix our example, we need to write the default style thinking on the smallest screen size, which will be the two columns layout, and then override it to three columns for bigger screen sizes. Now it works as expected, and if we want we can target a specific range of breakpoints. Now it only turns into a three columns layout on the range between the small and medium. You can also use the max and min modifiers to generate custom breakpoints on the fly. Now our layout will change at the breakpoint of 400 pixels. And as an additional tip, you can also set custom breakpoints for your theme on your Tailwind configuration file. If you're using Tailwind, you're probably already using the IntelliSense extension for your IDE. I'll be showing this and some other tips using React on VS Code, but you can probably apply it for your IDE or your framework. In my opinion, this extension is one of the main reasons why Tailwind is so pleasant to use and why it got so many users. When you're writing the style, it will auto-complete the class names for you, it will show you the color being used, and it will explain the details of the class when you hover it. But you might have noticed that you don't get any of that when you're writing the classes in a variable outside the HTML. Well, did you know you can get all this good stuff here as well? By default, it already works with some variable names like class or class name. And you can even make it an object for all of your variants. But if you really want to be able to use it with a specific variable name that it's not accepted by default, you can just open your VS Code settings with this shortcut, search for class attributes, and add the variable name you want here. And now it will work with that new variable name. For this one, it's good to understand a little bit of how Tailwind works behind the scenes. Let's say we have a select input with some colors, red, green and blue, and we want to change the input's background to the selected color. So let's use a dynamic class name using the color state. Now when we select green, well that doesn't work. The thing is that Tailwind eliminates all the classes that are not being used. This is how it's able to have so many features and still keep our project's bundle size small. Since these classes don't explicitly appear anywhere in the code, they will be purged. So to make it work, we would need to have all the class names we want written somewhere in our code. Now the background color successfully changes to the selected color, even though all we did was to add an unused variable to our code. For this specific example, we could just use this list for the logic. But if we wanted to have a combination of all the colors and intensity numbers, it might be a little too much. 
To be honest, when I have used cases like this, I just decide not to use Tailwind for that part. This tip was more to help you understand how Tailwind works, so you don't get confused when things aren't working the way you expected. And with that you finally made halfway through the list. If you already learned something and you're enjoying the content, please let me know by liking the video and subscribe if you feel like it. Alright, let's get back to the list. Ok, we all love to write our styles in Tailwind, but there are still times where we are forced to use CSS for our styles. Here we have a third party component from an external library. And we want to change the style, which we can do by overriding this class, but we want to stick with the Tailwind colors. For that, all we need to do is use the add apply directive. And just like that, we can basically write the Tailwind class just as we would in HTML. Another alternative is to use the theme object. We can grab anything set in the Tailwind theme. The nice thing about this is that you can also use it in the Tailwind arbitrary utilities. Here, if we have this box and we want to give it a neon-like shadow, we can add a custom shadow like this. This inside the brackets is basically CSS when the spaces are replaced with underscores. And if we want to use the Tailwind colors, we can grab them from the theme object. What if we want to use this neon shadow style in other places of our app? For that, instead of repeating this class everywhere, we can use the Tailwind configuration file to create our own custom utility class. The style is based on a shadow, so let's extend the box shadow utility. This is just CSS, so we can use the theme we talked in the other trick to use the Tailwind colors here. And I'll actually add two shadows, a 5 pixel one with a brighter color and a 20 pixel one with a darker color. Now we can replace our original style with this new shadow neon utility, and we can use it anywhere in our app. Essentially anything in Tailwind can be extended. We can add new colors, custom breakpoints and many other things. Ok, what if we want to be able to choose the color of the neon shadow by appending the color here? Right now it is fixed to purple, because that's what we put in our configuration. To be able to choose it, we need to make our own custom Tailwind plugin. So let's go to our Tailwind configuration again and import the plugin helper from the Tailwind CSS package. Now we add the plugin to our plugins list. The plugin helper exposes many Tailwind properties and functions that we can use. In our plugin, we want to grab the theme so we can access the colors and we want to grab the add utilities function that will allow us to create our own Tailwind classes. So now let's initiate our empty utilities object. We want to add the classes here for each color. So let's grab the colors from the theme and loop through the colors. Here's where things get a little bit tricky. If we take a look at the colors object, we'll see that sometimes the value is a string and sometimes it is an object with a color palette. In our case, we want to use the colors that are objects, because we want to use the 200 for the bright color and the 700 for the darker color. So the first thing we need to do in our loop is to check if the color is an object. If it is, we'll take the bright color of 200, actually let's make it 500 this time, and we'll take the dark color of 700. Now we can create our neon class inside our utilities object, set our 5 pixel bright neon shadow and our 20 pixel dark neon shadow. And finally we can use the add utilities function after the loop to add it to Tailwind. Now if we go back to our code, we can change this to our new neon utility with any color we want. Red, green, blue, and the best part is that autocomplete works and we can see all the colors that we can use here. Oof, I think this was the most advanced trick on the list, but hopefully I was able to break it down well enough. So let's go to the next one. Did you know that we can import the Tailwind colors as an object inside JavaScript? This can be extremely useful if you want to use the Tailwind colors to create our own custom theme. Let's make a primary color, which will just be the Tailwind Violet palette. Now we can go to our code and start using this color just like any other Tailwind color. And if we want, we can also set it with the spread operator so that we can add a default color here. Now we can use the primary color without a number and it will use the 600 we set here. I actually use this trick in my startup's landing page, and because of that I can easily change the theme colors of my app while still using the Tailwind colors. Alright, we finally arrived at the last one, and this one is actually a package that I use in all my projects when I use Tailwind. Let's say we're making our own custom component styled with Tailwind, but we want to be able to override the style if needed, so we let the user pass the class name which will be appended to the default classes. Now let's try to turn the text to white. Well, that doesn't work. The thing is that the combination of the class names have conflicting utility classes, so only one of them is gonna be used. 
To fix that, we can use the Tailwind merge package. All we need to do is pass the base classes as the first parameter and the class name as the second parameter. Now our class name works because it's overriding the default class. This is also very useful if you want to have multiple variants for our component and change the variant based on some variables like we're doing in this drop zone component here. By the way, sooner I showed you the landing page of my startup and I actually have a series where I'm trying to build a startup from scratch as a solo developer. And if you're also interested in this type of content, make sure to check out this video, which as of right now is also the video that gave the most subscribers to the channel. I hope you like it. And also let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video and if you learned something new. And yeah, that will be it for today. See you in the next one. Ciao,